I haven't watched a lot of Joe Rogan clips over the years. I would mainly click on a Joe Rogan video if it was on a topic I was really interested in. So I watched the episode with Tim Pool and Jack Dorsey and his lawyer, things like that. I haven't seen much from Joe Rogan since he moved to Spotify, but from what I've seen in the past, he seems like a pretty middle of the road, commonsensical kind of guy seems to be willing to sit down and have a discussion with just about anyone. And that's something that's already caused an uproar at Spotify. Spotify employees have been throwing tantrums over Joe Rogan, trying to get him shut down because he did shows with people like Alex Jones. So you can't do that anymore. If someone gets canceled, you have to completely marginalize and shun him. Otherwise you get canceled too. Fortunately, the Spotify employees learned that the company cares more about keeping a really popular podcaster who's making the company endless trunks of money than about soothing a bunch of crybabies. Today, I watched a new Joe Rogan clip on YouTube. He was talking about authoritarianism and Parler being banned. And what I found interesting was that he was saying something so incredibly obvious that you wouldn't think that any sane person, especially in the West, would ever disagree with it. And yet a ton of people, even in the West, including some very powerful people, totally disagree with him and would label him an extremist for what he said. Let's go through some of the clip. He begins by pointing out why so many people seem to like authoritarianism now. Ath authoritarianism in this country is like, there's a lot of people that like it because it silences their opponents, mm -hmm. right? People are fans of authoritarianism when it's silencing their enemies. Then he brings up the parlor ban as an example, but immediately raises an important question. What's going on right now with like parlors getting shut down and, you know, Amazon pulls it from their servers and then Apple pulls it off of their uh, app store and then Google pulls it off the Google Play store. And everybody's like, yeah, good. They're spreading hate. Like, hmm. What percentage is spreading hate? Good question. What percentage? I was on parlor. I never saw any calls for violence. Were they there? Of course they were. But they're also on Twitter and Facebook and YouTube, and it never occurs to anyone to say that Twitter and Facebook and YouTube should be shut down. When it comes to Parler, all you need to do is take some screenshots of some users calling for violence, and it suddenly becomes perfectly reasonable to shut down the entire platform, even though the platform doesn't allow calls for violence and removes them when it's notified. Is this a good idea? Is it a good idea to say, well, there are millions of messages on Parler, but we found 18 that called for violence, so we're shutting down the platform, even though we can easily find similar calls for violence on any other platform? Joe sees two obvious problems. The real problem is that it, it sets a weird precedent. It sets a precedent where the people that are in power can decide that something is wrong speak, something is bad, and you can just eliminate it completely. Yeah. That's problem one. When you say it's okay to shut down a platform if some of the users call for violence, what you're really saying is that tech giants like Amazon and Apple and Google should have the authority to shut down platforms that they decide should be shut down. If you're saying that, you're really saying that you trust the tech giants to make those kinds of decisions about what's allowed on the internet. Do you really trust Amazon and Apple and Google with that kind of power? Next problem. When things like that happen, they keep going. They don't just stop at that. They don't stop at things that we can all agree are, are terrible. They, they, they go to things that maybe you don't think are terrible, right. but other people do think are terrible. Amazon, Apple, and Google shut down Parler. People say, good, Parler was bad. But again, what they've really said is, Amazon, Apple, and Google should have the power and authority to decide what's allowed on the internet. And now that they've agreed to give Supreme Chancellor Palpatine the power and authority to become Galactic Emperor Palpatine, is he going to ban all of the channels and pages and platforms that they don't like and then stop? 
Or is he going to do whatever he wants because they made him too powerful to stop? But these people think, well, Amazon, Apple, and Google are taking out the right, and I'm on the left, so I'm safe. Look, you may be on the left now, but unless you are pushing further and further left by the minute, you're not going to be on the left for long, because there will be people further left than you, and they'll view you as a right-wing extremist who needs to be canceled if you disagree with them about anything. There's a lot of people that claim to be leftist, they claim to be left-wing, but they're not quite left-wing enough, mm. and so they get taken out yeah. by people who are more left-wing. Yeah. If you disagree with anything on the left, you're the right. right. And you might be extreme right. Right. Yeah, no, that you're a Nazi if you disagree. Yes! Again, Joe Rogan didn't say anything that I wouldn't regard as completely obvious. It's so obviously correct that it's almost boring. Like, how is this even a discussion? How is it possible in the United States of America in the 21st century that it needs to be pointed out that giving massive trillion dollar corporations totalitarian control over what people are allowed to say is a really, really bad idea. And yet, here we are in a world where stating the obvious makes you an extremist.